along with Jeremy Saland, a former prosecutor uh, for the Manhattan DA's office. While we watch for these defense motions to play out, um, here's one of the things going on Rashawn uh, is saying of Susan Necklace. Why on earth she wouldn't object to the mention of a condom, I don't understand. Uh, yeah. This is because Susan Necklace uh, said that it was a dog whistle to mention that Donald Trump had sex with uh, Stormy Daniels, allegedly, although he disputes it without a condom, a dog whistle for rape. Some of the headlines coming in from the courtroom right now as the judge discusses this motion uh, for mistrial. The judge said, in going back to the very opening statements, Mr. Blanche, the defense attorney, in your opening statement, you denied there was ever a sexual encounter between Stormy Daniels and, and the defendant. Uh, and, and that is the, the point that he's raising there, uh, Paula Reed and Jeremy, is that um, you, you den by denying it, you put her credibility at issue. And by doing that, you opened the door for the prosecution to ask her to tell the story. Is that yeah. right? And then when there were certain details you didn't like, like about using protection, you didn't object. And it's interesting, the judge revealed that he's going back and actually reviewing the transcript. He looked at the whole transcript from Tuesday and he said he was satisfied with what came in. He admonished them for not making more objections. So it doesn't appear that they're going to win on this motion for a mistrial. We didn't expect that. It's something they have to do, but it, it doesn't look good for them right now. Yeah, they're not winning. And I think to your point, Paula, he's going back, he's reading the transcript. He's certainly on top of his game. He knows what they said and didn't say. And again, why didn't you object to this point? You didn't object to it. And then you open the door to start out of the gate? That's on you. I am no attorney, but it does seem a fairly obvious knee-jerk knee reaction objection that she says he didn't wear a condom. Object! Like, immediately. Yeah. Like, what? there's not going to be a punishment. There's, there's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to hear your perspective, because I do think that it's possible that she was focused on a few different things, because she was preparing, you know, for this cross. She's managing her client, but this is her job to pay attention. There were multiple times, though, when Trump had to kind of tap her and nudge her to object, but it is a glaring omission. There's times when a judge will actually take it upon his or herself and say, sustained, and, <laughs> oh, i got to pay attention, you got to pay attention, because you can be multitasking. I get that. But when you have this client in this form and this that much at stake, you're on that A-game. And you're also not one attorney. You have multiple attorneys who could be assisting you doing other things. Object, object, object. And, and in fact, as you suggested, um, the motion for mistrial was just denied by Judge Marchan. Here's Mr. Trump, the defendant. Let's listen to what he has to say. What happened today? I don't think we have to do any expl explaining. I'm not allowed to anyway because this judge is corrupt. He's a corrupt judge. This judge, what he did, and what his ruling was is a disgrace. Everybody saw what happened today. He's a corrupt judge, and he's totally conflicted. And I got to get back on the campaign trail. I'm not supposed to be here. We are so innocent. There's never been anything like it. Read every single analyst, legal analyst. I'm innocent, and I'm being held in this court with a corrupt judge who's totally conflicted. Take a look at his conflict. It's a disgrace to the city of New York, to the state of New York, and to the country. Thank you very much. All right, the defendant, Donald J. Trump, uh, saying that he doesn't have to talk about what happened in court because everybody saw, and he went after the judge, Juan Marchand, calling him a corrupt judge. Uh, and we should note, uh, Jeremy and Paula, uh, he's allowed to go after yeah. the judge. He, the judge is not covered in the gag order, uh, so probably his attorney said, just don't talk about Stormy, say whatever you want about the judge, and go go forth. Yeah, that's exactly what he did, right? Get it all out of your system, take it all out on Juan Marchand, but, I mean, he's insisting that he is a corrupt judge. There's no evidence that he's a corrupt judge. They have objected uh, to him overseeing this case because of work that the judge's daughter does on behalf of a political uh, political organization that creates ads for for Democratic politicians, including Adam Schiff, but that is not something so far that has prompted him to have to recuse himself from the case. When I was in that courtroom, I saw no evidence that, that he was biased. In fact, he sustained a lot of objections. And again, I go back to his ruling on the alleged violations of the gag order. He seems to view this in some way that, yes, Trump does have some political speech, and they have had a lot of wins under this judge. And we should also note that Donald Trump also said in that little speech uh, he just delivered uh, that he was innocent. And again, by saying he's innocent, that kind of feeds into one of the reasons why he's so mad, because 
by denying that anything ever happened, they put Stormy Daniels' credibility at issue, and the prosecution could then open the door and say, tell us your story, which has made him very, very angry. Yeah, I'll tell you this much. He's not gonna, he's not gonna have the chutzpah to get in that courtroom and say that on the stand. He's not gonna say any of this on the stand because he would run afoul and run amok and find himself cross-examined and impeached in ways that he can never fathom. And it's really, I have a visceral response when I hear him speak, and I can't stress enough, and I've said it so many times, in that courtroom, he is as guilty as you or me. He's innocent until proven right, guilty. Right, of course. Not a reasonable doubt. But when he steps out of that courtroom, what he says is so despicable and so undermining of the criminal justice system and the foundation of our country that he should stop running his mouth and people should stop allowing him. You know, maybe if uh, Blanche would actually, you know, object in the courtroom and not stand silent like he's standing next to his client outside the courtroom, we'd be in a much better place. Donald Trump would be in a much better place. But it's what do you, really what do you find Specifically, what do you find uh, despicable, the accusations that the judge is corrupt? No matter, no matter what happens in that courtroom, unless it goes his way, and we've seen this in, in the previous case, right, with, in the civil matter with the attorney general's office, he comes out and he attacks the system of, uh, of the, the criminal justice system, attacks the judge, and he undermines the credibility of law and order. And if that's the bar that people are now going to have, that's really problematic for the next person who comes in line and say, Donald Trump said this, Donald Trump did this, so why can't I? He was far more egregious, and he's undermining the credibility of law enforcement. You, you are innocent, and fight your case in that courtroom. Do whatever mm -hmm. it takes, but stop saying this out of the courtroom. Stop. When you have this pulpit and people listen and imbibe upon it and consume it like they do, it's dangerous and he well, needs to stop. I'll tell you what, if, if people are, see, are seeing this and say, I'm going to do that if I ever get in trouble with the law, they're going to find out that they're going to be treated much harshly. Two systems of justice. Much, much more harshly than Mr. Is Trump is being treated. They will be thrown in prison for violating a gag order. Uh, Judge Marchand just.